our next speaker. Liz, uh, Mark's going to go next. Yeah, oh, we're trading. Yeah, we are. Fine, we can do that do way. <laughs> our next speaker is Mark Kepinell, director of Carbon Tracker, who many other guests have already referenced. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, really appreciate the invitation to join me today. Uh, Carbon Track, I, my background is in, in fund management. I work for a big asset manager in London. We, we ran about 60 billion, 70 billion, and my team, we, we looked at risks from a sustainability perspective. We had a small part of that team. And I, I was just surprised, the more we knew about the science of climate risk, just how easy it was for the coal and oil companies coming into the city of London to raise capital. It was a kind of a paradoxical time. Every day we would see the science uh, and the news, and we'd see weather events uh, getting more extreme, and yet it just seemed easy for people to come away with, with a big check. And that didn't seem right to me. And I just started thinking about the numbers. What, what is going on with the business models of Exxon and, and there as it was Peabody and others, uh, which is based on the assumption of growth. They want to grow their businesses, they want to get bigger, uh, and that's their story. Um, so what I did, my, um, and, and my colleagues, and grateful for the, the terrific support from uh, the Rockefeller Brothers Fund and, and, and others, like Royal Family Fund, allowed us to do this simple analysis where we took the world's top 200 coal and gas companies, and we looked at their reserves, of, um, of C we looked at the reserves, and we looked at the CO2 embedded in reserves, and said, well, what would happen if these companies could execute their business plans and sell everything that they have and go and explore for more? And the way that Wall Street sees this sector is that everything that you can find is basically there to be dug up and to be burned. There's no rule. It's not illegal to be a coal company. It's not illegal to be an oil company. You know, this is the challenge that we face. They, they're free to, do, to raise money, to do whatever they like. And yet we know that there are consequences of that. Um, and we launched this report on vulnerable carbon, other markets carrying a carbon bubble. I want to say we didn't say it was a financial bubble at the time. We didn't. We couldn't be certain that it would be a financial bubble. It was certainly a carbon bubble. And the reason for that is that we know that these companies together, along with governments, own far more fossil fuels than could be possibly burned to stay below two degrees. Um, so that's, that's our starting point. It was a piece of maths, this thing called the carbon budget. We can only release no more than 900 gigatons of carbon dioxide can be released. Actually, others say it's a lot less than that, to have any chance of avoiding this two degrees of warming. Uh, a pace, a scale of warming that we've not seen for hundreds of thousands of years. So what was our messages? Our messages in our report and our analysis was to regulate, to say get to, get to grips with this issue, get to grips with the risks. What are companies disclosing to their stockholders about these risks? And you would think that the coal companies and the oil companies, when faced with a, a, an endangered future, that they would suddenly start to discuss these risks in their regulatory filings. And what do we find in their regulatory they don't address the core risks in their business models. And the other thing that we would expect to find from the companies is that actually if this is a real risk, they would have to start to decline and get smaller. And yet we find the opposite is the case. What we find is that Exxon and Chevron and BP and Shell, um, knowing that we have to reduce emissions dramatically over the next few decades, are all planning to grow production uh, by at least 25%. Um, and this is, presents a fundamental contradiction to the business models of these companies. And what is, what is the issue or the challenge for the shareholders? And the first is time. We know, based on emissions, that we break through this two degrees budget in, in, in around 15 to 16 years' time. It doesn't mean we'll see a two degrees of warming. It means the emissions will be there that would lead us to that rise in temperature. And thereafter, three degrees isn't that long off. It's around 30 to 45 years' time. So why, why should investors matter? What I hear from pension schemes is, is when the markets choose to decarbonize, as we're passive investors, we will decarbonize when the market decarbonizes. That's what they tell us. Um, and then we hear, you know, we hear from the companies, well, of course, this decarbonization, it won't happen and it can't happen, and it won't happen for 50, 60, 80 years. And yet, it won't happen until it's too late. So the choices investors have to make is, is when, when do we act? When do we make the decisions to act? So um, carbon tracking, we think of when we look at divestment as, well, firstly, if, a co if in the case of coal companies, um, we've certainly seen that, and certainly for us, a number of oil companies, uh, there is no fiduciary duty to invest in the bad company. It's a myth. There's no fiduciary duty to say you have to own bad companies. 
And if these companies have a broken business model, then as shareholders, what do we, what do, we do? So the first question is, is there a financial case um, to divest? And certainly what we're finding is that uh, actually finding oil is becoming more expensive. And that as these companies sell their really cheap and easy to find oil, which they found at $10 a barrel and you could sell it at $80 a barrel, what we find today is they're producing oil at $50 a barrel and selling it at $50 a barrel. And that's actually a rapid way to lose money and to destroy the return on equity, which is what investors are looking for. Is the business model of these companies broken? And if demand for fossil fuels will decline, as it must do, then these businesses must start to decline. So time. And the decisions to grow these businesses are being made by these companies now. So the first action for a pension scheme must be to tell the companies to put in place wind-down strategies. Every, every engagement or discussion with a company should start with uh, show us your roadmap to put yourself into runoff and to decline. Um, so that's, that's, the, that's the key. That's the first you can divest or you can tell companies to wind down. Um, what we see is actually exchanges like the New York Stock Exchange, like the London Stock Exchange, is where the risks are being concentrated. And there will be a time when actually the exchanges will have to start to kick these companies off the exchanges as they represent new and critical risks to the financial markets and to financial stability. Mayor Bloomberg will be reporting um, in this coming month about why climate risk is a key, a key risk to financial markets into the future. So we have to think about how do we reform markets, how do we change markets as well. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sort of finish by, um, there is a kind of a, a question and, and uh, I sort of asked which was, you know, knowing that we know um, is happening, where, where do we start? The first thing is we have to stop throwing new money at developing new projects. Carbon Tracking, we produced a report called the $2 trillion danger zone report, which is over the next 10 years, Wall Street and the City of London and others plan to spend a further $2 trillion on finding projects that we just don't need in a two degree world. So that's, we have to stop there. And the honest of business case, could these companies be worth more by getting smaller? And so with a number of local authority pension schemes in the United Kingdom, it's a group called the Local Authority Pension Fund Forum. We produced this report on how the oil companies, by getting smaller and beginning to decline, could actually become worth more to their shareholders as they begun, begin an orderly runoff. We produced this with a large number of local authority pension schemes who actually realized um, the game is up with this industry, the game is up with this sector. And now actually, I think we're going to have to say to these companies, it's, it's okay to let go now. It's okay to stop this business, and we have to put this sector into runoff, certainly over the next 10 to 15 years. And if we leave it too late, um, you use the phrase seller's remorse in your, in your remarks. And I think the worst remorse we'll find is in 20 to 30 years' time, there is no going back from climate change. Once we've breached two degrees and once we've breached three degrees, we're talking 100,000 years before we can actually go back to any type of climate stability. I think the real remorse is knowing that we had the chance to act today uh, and we chose not to execute a strategy that would avoid this type of climate catastrophe. Thank you very much.